morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming out here this morning. I'm going to be doing a short presentation on postures, and uh, this is really meant to be um, something that is uh, supposed to get uh, beginners in on this uh, technology. So just some, something brief about myself. Uh, I am a software developer by profession, and I am a devil worshiper, according to the JavaScript thing. Um, <laughs> that was mentioned this morning, and I'm also working uh, on C Sharp. That's on the server side uh, of the code. I work. I've been with Next Tech Roads and Highways, which used to be a division of EOH. I've been with them for for 12 years, and I've been using Postgres for for um, for eight years. So, we, uh, very briefly, we are going to do a background on uh, GIS. Uh, what it is, uh, we're going to talk about installing PostGIS, and then we're going to look at uh, some of the functions that are available to those that make use of this uh, uh, um, technology. So very briefly, what is GIS? GIS is a, a geographic information uh, system. This is very much apart from the database itself. So we are not yet touching on the database. We're just looking at what GIS is. And uh, this is used to store, edit, um, and analyze geographical data. And uh, this data is then presented in layers. And what is very nice about it is that it uh, provides a new way of uh, viewing information, uh, na namely spatially. So a uh, typical example, you have a bunch of stores in the country, and you want to spatially see how the sales are going in those stores. You could, of course, make use of a bar chart. You could make use of a pie chart but it just brings it out uh, a lot more powerfully when you're making use of um, 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 the spatial layout of the information. Uh, another very good use case is you're walking down the street, you get hungry, you would like to get uh, a takeaway. So you could obviously search for that information and that would give you Google results, but you can imagine how much more powerful it is if you get a map and you get your position plotted on the map and you get the restaurants that are closest to you. So um, the stuff is pretty much laid out like this. You have the real world, and what happens is that uh, a GIS would basically have that broken up into various layers, and I'm going to, to touch on that um, a bit later. Um, over the years, um, GIS has uh, evolved. You had initially the data available in, like, um, a flat file, like what you see there, and then uh, you would then have that packaged as a shapefile, which is .shp. You would have a projection file. I'm going to talk on that later. Then you'd actually have uh, like a DBF, which actually had the, uh, the attribute data. So the shapefile, for instance, would hold the points of the various restaurants. Then you'd have uh, the DBF that would um, actually hold the you know, restaurant name restaurant address, contact number, you know, that type of information. And then you would have the last uh, part, which is a projection. And I'm going to talk on that, uh, talk on that a bit later. And then uh, we now have fully relational um, uh, uh, data baked into the database. So there's a lot more power that uh, you have at your disposal. And you can see there's quite a leap from the flat file to the um, relational database, which is now where we are with uh, GIS. So what is a spatial database? That is typically a database that then stores this um, geographic information in a relational um, format. Um, and it can be, it's, it's obviously related to the real world, and uh, that includes coordinates and, and topology. Um, there are two ways that this uh, information presents itself. The first one is a vector. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. And um, the second one is a raster. And I'm going to also show you what that looks like. What, what's, what's the difference between uh, the two? Uh, the vector is very crisp uh, information. So that is typically what you would use if you want to show high quality GIS data. The raster is what you would use if you want to show patterns or um, you have extremely large sets of data and you just want to make it readily available to the user because if you uh, uh, made it available in its raw form, it'd be extremely slow. 
simple example is um, if there was a fire uh, in this general area and you had uh, you know, little data points where you collected, let's say, temperature information. Now that's a lot of information over a long period of time. So you can use raster information to put that on the map and just give someone an indication of where you had, let's say, the highest temperatures um, of, of, of this fire. But I'm going to touch on that a bit later. So um, what is PostGIS? Uh, PostGIS, and uh, the logo for PostGIS is that elephant on your bottom right-hand corner. It's a logo for PostGIS. It is basically a Postgres extension. Um, and uh, this makes it possible for one to perform CRUD operations on the GIS. And, um, and, and, and it comes with its own optimization capability. So what would typically happen, I'm going to touch on it a bit later, is that you would create a database. And when you create a database, you would run a um, command to install the extension on that database. And if you have a look at a completely empty database and you look at the difference, you will notice that before the database has that extension installed on it, you probably have like zero functions in the public schema. And once you install the Postgres extension, or the PostGIS extension, you would have um, about 1,300 functions. Um, and that's what this brings. It also adds uh, two specific to this talk. Again, it's, it's very straight. Uh, it's meant to be a very um, a simple entry into PostGIS. You have two uh, data types that would be added into, the, into your database uh, when you install the extension. And that would be your geometry and your geography. What are they really? Um, it's pretty much binary data, uh, sort of wrapped. Um, we would refer to it as WKB, or well-known uh, binary. It is basically large binary format. So you would have, you know, you have ints, you have um, uh, character varying, you have date time. So when you install this extension, you now have a, a geometry or a geography column, which is basically a, um, a binary format field. And the difference between the two, the geometry um, stores the data according to the OGC, that's the Open Geospatial Consortium, and they basically agreed on a standard that they would um, use to store information and share it among um, each other, you know, the various databases. So you have um, the geometry um, type which would store 2D information in a flat plane, I'll touch on that a bit later. So that would be typically your latitude and your longitude. And um, the, geom the geography would then bring in the Z. That should be your uh, height above uh, sea level. Right. Um, I, I touched on this um, just now between the, um, the two. And I'm going to show you how this um, spherical world that we live in, you know, putting it out on a 2D Cartesian plane, uh, why that's important and how exactly one goes about um, doing it. So you have three main types when we talk about uh, um, um, postures or GIS. We have um, points, which are like just an X and a Y. And the simplest way to think about this is think about a Cartesian plane. Uh, you've got uh, your Y axis and your X axis. And um, if you put a point on any one of that, uh, any, on any place on that Cartesian plane, um, Without you showing me where the point is, if you just gave me an address, I'd be able to tell you where the point is. So you have points, you have lines. Lines is basically two points, more than one point. That makes a line. You have multi-lines, which are basically many, many, many points. And all this is, of course, vector. And then you have polygons, which is, in essence, a, a bunch of points which make up lines where the start and the end point is the same so that it's closed. Um, and that is pretty much what it looks like. I've just uh, touched on it. That's, you have your x, y's, that's, that's your point A and point B, and then you have uh, vectors where you have a bunch of points, and then you have your, your, your co coordinates. Okay, and that's um, how the stuff looks like um, if you uh, represent it um, on, a, on, a, on a piece of paper. That's pretty much what it would look like. So. If you're using Windows, you would, in, you would install PostGIS using the Stack Builder. Um, I got a lot of flack for this during the year because I use Windows. Um, but um, I'm okay with it. 
allow me to say that our back end, which is the actual Postgres and um, uh, the, uh, our map server, the, the, the stuff that actually serves the tiles from our uh, Postgres, uh, actually runs in Linux. And people have asked me why, and the simple reason is it just runs, it's sort of like they are made for each other. It just runs better, it just runs faster. But uh, because of the whole C-sharp story and stuff, we are, we are in Windows, and we are proud of it. OK, so if you use a stack builder, you can install um, the, the extension that way. Then um, if you are now to, so I'm just going, going, going to quickly take you through a very simple guide to setting up the database and installing the extension. So if you um, opened your, your command prompt as an administrator, you can cd to the Postgres installations bin folder. And then there you'll find psql, which is what we are going to work with. And we're also going to work with, work with shape to sql. You'll find those two um, um, libraries in the bin folder of your Postgres installation. So you would um, type in um, create database, and that's the database we're going to create. This you would type in uh, psql after you have uh, logged in um, to psql. You don't have to log into a specific database. You just log in and then uh, create the database, create the schema. You don't have to. Um, I'm just doing this for the purpose of uh, demarcating where the information is going to sit. Now, when you've done this, you will not be able to make use of GIS um, in Postgres. You have to do this last command, which is um, to create that extension. And then once you've done that, uh, this is just a very simple command that you can use to check the version of uh, Postgres um, uh, Postgres that you're running on your on your database. Then I got some data for us. This is from uh, you can Google that site. They will make uh, this data. A lot of uh, data is available in shapefile format. So now we need to get the shapefile into the database. When you download the shapefile, like I said, it comes with a bunch of files. They sort of move together. The projection file, at least the database DBF file, and um, and the actual one uh, file that contains the the the, the, the GIS data. So we're going to make use of this um, command, which is shape, shape to SQL. And what this does is that it will take those, at least those three files, and then it will stream that um, into a file, into a SQL file that you can then use to execute with a bunch of insert commands. And then it will take the projection as well, and uh, we, we will touch on that later. And then that will all sit then in one um, database. I mean, in one table in your database. So um, first command is the dash s four three two six. That you're going to come across a lot of time. What is dash s four three two six? The dash s is a parameter for the SRID as a stif special reference um, identifier. Now, what is that all about? Um, different parts of the world have different IDs. Uh, South Africa, we work with uh, four three two six. What it is, is um, you, have, you have the world which is like a round uh, ball. And the big issue has always been how it is that we make this round ball flat. And that is the process of uh, projection. And projection is uh, a process of give and take. When you put the round ball on a flat surface, you're going to have to give something and, you know, to get something. So, let me give you a simple example. If you go to Google Maps and you zoom out completely, you will notice that the North and the South Pole are ridiculously huge. The reason they're like that is because um, they're making use of the uh, Mercator um, projection. And what that does is that um, um, think of a basketball, and then you cut a basketball open and you want to put it on a flat surface. Some way to bring some parts of the basketball, because everything is, you, you'll have parts that are close to each other and the parts that are far away from each other. So to bring parts closer to each other is a mathematical formula that's used. That's that 4326 um, code. And obviously when you bring some parts of the ball together, other parts are going to have to be stretched. So um, you'll notice that there's so many projections out there. In some cases, the middle of the of the, of the, or the middle band of the Earth is huge, and the tops are very small. In other cases, it's the other way around. So that's what this um, 4326 is about. Different parts of the world will have different codes. 
because of the mathematics behind it. And it's a way of making sure that if I import data from India and I import data from South Africa, I'm able to do distance calculations in a uniform fashion. Um, I've touched on all that. So if you did a select statement, you'd actually be able to see that when you install the PostGIS extension, these are all the SRIDs. I just um, chopped some of them out. These are the SRIDs that are made available to you within the, um, within the, uh, within the database. OK, so let's continue. So we've done the shape to SQL, dash S. We've talked about that. The next parameter is a dash I. The dash I is to tell the, um, this um, shape to SQL um, library to index the data once it has um, in, 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 um, imported it. And why this is important, excuse me, is um, the, and uh, I mean, you can run the uh, test yourself. I, I think indexes um, speak for themselves. And if you do not make use of an index in Postgres, there will be a marked uh, performance lag. And if you use um, indexes, um, you're looking at a performance increase of easily 2 to 300 um, percent. And there are ways that this actually happens behind the scenes. I'm going to touch on it a bit later. Um, but very, very briefly, what, what, what in essence happens is that um, the engine will create a, a, what we call a, a bounding box, which is then used to determine at various zoom levels or at various uh, levels where the data is actually um, sitting. In um, SQL Server, I, I used SQL Server very uh, uh, briefly before I, I shifted with this, is a lot of that is not necessarily done for you out of the box. They have a process called, I think it's, triang it's not triangulation, um, it will come to me, but it starts with a T. But a lot of that, you uh, tessellation. It's, it's tessellation. So you actually have to set that up yourself. Um, a lot of that has to actually be done manually. But that was many years ago. Obviously, a, a lot has changed. But if you do not in, uh, create the index of out, the, out the box, um, you can create the index later on using this command, create index. Um, that's the name of the index. That's the name of the table. And that's the, the, the column that you're going to apply the gist index. Um, on. Okay, um, so we've done that part of the command, and then um, that's just where the data is stored, the C colon slash work, etc., etc. You can see that's a shape file, and then um, then you have the the name of the table that I want to import it in. GIS dot roads. GIS is a schema that I created earlier. Dot roads is the name of the table, and then um, after that's done, I'm going to request psql to um, dump that into that database with that user. Um, and then it'll ask me to enter my username and uh, it'll ask me to enter the password for the Postgres user. I enter the password and then it'll just, it'll pump that into the uh, database. You know how psql goes. It'll just have a bunch of zeros and ones, zeros and ones um, as it goes through all the records in your database. And then when it's done, it will then um, <coughs> let you know that that data is now in the database. Right. Um, what actually happens behind the scenes when the data is being imported, I think is important for us to appreciate. What actually happens is, remember I told you that there is a, um, a, a bunch of functions, about 1,300 functions that are, that are um, placed in your database when you run the, uh, when you create, when you um, apply the extension on your database. When you open the SQL file that is generated when you are importing this, the shape file into your database, for every row, it, it, it will insert, for instance, name of the shop, address of the shop, um, the food that the shop provides. When, when we come to the actual GIS data, it actually calls a function. And what that function has is the, um, the, 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 the schema, the table, the column, the SRID, the type of um, 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 shape, uh, um, shape file data you're dealing with. Remember, I talked about point, polygons, multi polygons, lines, etc. And um, so all of that is then used. It uses that function to then import the, the data. If you look at the row file, it, you would typically have a very long string 
that is just made up of um, numbers. So, interesting question. What happens if you try to import this data without the extension? Well, Postgres will try to import it. Um, it obviously will not pick up this function, the add geometry function. It'll, it'll, try, it, it'll likely see this as a, as a, as a character, and be, I mean as a, as a varchar value, and um, it, it is so long that it will have to truncate it and then throw an error and tell you that I cannot import it. So oftentimes people forget to install the extension, so if you get an error, it's because the extension has not been um, installed. So what if you have, someone gives you an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV, and all they have is X and Ys. So what you do is you import the X and Ys as um, doubles into the database, and then you can run this um, command, which is make point, you give it an X and Y, and again, very important, you've got to give it an SRID. And um, look, if you're working in your own database, you don't have, uh, you're not going to be sharing information or you're just you know, testing the stuff, maybe the SRID is not so important. But it is very important, and I'll show you some of the queries we do, like when you're trying to find you know, how close you are to something and, 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 and what the closest items are to a specific location, etc. So that, that becomes um, important. So this, this command converts an XY value into an actual geometry um, 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 type. So if, if I do that select um, and I look at the type in the result set, it will be a geometry type. Right, um, let's talk about rasters. A raster, and I'm gonna, this is, this is, I'm going to try and simplify it, but you really want to get into rasters because they're, they're fascinating. In essence, the t-shirts the that have been going around and, and there's this new thing where you have uh, computer graphics in a bunch of blocks, I think you've seen that. Uh, that that's, that's, basi that's basically rasters. It's the computer games we used to play 15, 20, 30 years ago that had really pathetic, that's pretty much how a raster looks like. So, it's a grid, think of a grid, um, or a matrix, and um, I now want to uh, color or show a lot of data. I think, let, let, let me use an example of the South African Weather Service. They've got um, temperature points or precipitation points or, ra or rain um, um, measurement points all, all across the country. If you were to try to read that data, it'd be ridiculously heavy and it would take forever to show. And if you notice what they normally do on, on television or on the websites is they show a very hazy looking image um, that just shows you how the temperatures are looking like or what the rainfall is looking like. That's basically rasterized um, data. So what you do is um, you have that uh, matrix, then in every block, uh, every block has a geo graphic reference. So that one block could be, let's say, just outside of the main road, and then the next block, and you can decide how big a block is in meters. Then you're going to put a value in each one of those blocks. Now, I've really blown it out. It's really huge now, or it's, uh, I've zoomed in at a very, uh, to a very high degree just so that you can appreciate what's happening. So l assume these are temperature points. So I say that um, you know, to your top left is three, and then two. So I have a scale from one to five. Then what I do is I, using the PostGIS extension for rasters, I then give a color value to each one of those blocks based on the, on the, on the, on the value in that block. So I, say, I, I tell the library, for a block with value one, give it red. Um, this is basically RGB, so 25500 would be red. And then uh, um, anything with a value of two, give it green. Anything with a value of three, give it blue. And then I can play around with the, with the, with the, with the figures. Um, why this is, I'm going to show you what a rice, rice image looks like. This is important because of speed and, um, and because of um, analytics. It would be very difficult to show that data in any other way. I mean, how are you going to show it? Um, Show me how the temperature looks like across Ekuruleni. It's going to be very difficult to show it. So this is actually the best way to show it. And if you thought of any other way, it'd probably be very slow. 
and um, obviously for, for visualization. And that, my friends, is what a rasterized image um, would look like. That will not come out of the database as it is. The extension, uh, POSIS extension, provides a way to export the raster as a PNG. And in that PNG, you can consume it using a WMS uh, web map server, like map, Mapbox and um, GeoServer, um, etc. So that that would be served as a tile. So as you zoom closer and closer, your data points are obviously going to decrease, and then you can now start pulling out your vectorized information. Another um, um, good example is with traffic information, uh, something that Google does. You can imagine all those vehicles on the road, if they were to show you the speed at which each vehicle was traveling, it would take forever to render that. And if you consider the number of people who would be requesting that image. So you'd have a, a middle layer that would just aggregate that information into a raster, and when you zoom in, you're in essence, you would in essence be looking at a raster. So when you see a red line on your Google Maps, you're not going to, it's, those are not like, you won't see a red car and another red car and another red car and, then, and, you know, and you know those cars are moving slowly. They will just use a rasterized image with that transparency and overlay that on the road map. That gives you a good indication of where you have high speeds, low speeds, and you know, average speeds. Right. How else can you, um, I'd earlier spoken about um, um, indexing. There is something else you can do to speed up your data, and that is um, clustering. Um, yeah, so the guys behind this extension are uh, they're real geniuses. So the story, the story behind clustering is it is a match between what's happening in the real world and what's happening on your disk. So what happens is the, um, the stuff is physically ordered on disk based on proximity. So. Um, so you'd have a record, record number one would, would have uh, um, something with a GIS attribute that is at Birchwood, and record number two, as an example, would have something else as an example that is, let's say, at, at OR Tambo International Airport, as opposed to, have, to having something that is you know, in Durban or Cape Town, as an example. So it's physically arranging the stuff so that it is um, on disk, based on the proximity um, that those uh, items are in uh, uh, um, as displayed in the real world. So we have indexing, we have clustering, and we have rasters. Um, and to set up a cluster, you'd basically run that um, command, but the command, thank you, must be run on an, uh, um, an indexed field. You cannot cluster on a non-indexed field for obvious reasons. Uh, it's, it's about speed. If you were to cluster on a, on a, on a non-index field, you can just imagine how long uh, that would take. So just a few, um, I've got 10 minutes left. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the stuff that you can do. Um, I have there a map. I don't know how well you see it. The letters are quite small. But um, there we have points. And if I wanted to order the points that are closest to the point that I've currently selected, I'd make use of that um, operator that you see there, the one with the greater than, dash, smaller than. I'm going to touch on that a bit later. You can actually order the stuff, uh, making use of your normal ordering um, operator uh, you know, in SQL, but that will not make use of the index and you will actually see the, the significant um, speed uh, difference. So what that command does, select star from towns, um, order by geometry, where, um, again, we have that make point, the lat long, where that is, uh, um, uh, um, you're, you're ordering it based on the point that you selected, and you only want this, the first five, or the five closest. And that will give you the stuff that is within that circle that I drew in there. The, another function is um, buffering. Buffering is uh, a, a good use case for buffering. Is let's say you were dealing with. Uh, I work for a company that is in the civil engineering uh, um, sector, so we provide solutions for the management of civil engineering um, um, or infrastructure assets. So in this case, if I wanted to see uh, my flood lines or how the floods would go or how a flood would, would uh, present itself if you had rain of so many, of so many millimeters. 
not kilometers. Um, I would use buffer. And then I would use that to show me the areas that would be affected by a rainfall of so many millimeters. So I'm only going to use buffer here for the, for the roads, just to give you an indication. So I just do a select SD buffer. By the SD underscore is just um, a prefix for the uh, functions that are installed with the extension when you install the extension to your database. And then the tolerance is that 0 0.003. You can increase that um, and play around with that, and that will give you an indication of how thick the line would become. So what does it return? It returns a geometry. So you can save that if you want to reuse it. And um, if I buffered the stuff you're seeing now, that's what it would look like. And you can see the red is the original line there, and I've just buffered it by 0 0.003, a factor of 0 0.003. Then we have um, ST intersects. You don't, see it, you don't see it very well, but what I've done is I have, I have um, I've in essence, run uh, this um, command, and uh, um, I am asking it to show me the streets that intersect with a specific area. And those streets, you don't see them, but they are highlighted in, um, in gray. Um, then we have other uh, type of functions. We have, for instance, ST um, area, and that is used to calculate the area in meters square or in square meters of a given polygon. And um, then we have um, geometry from, from text that I touched on earlier. Um, the only difference between this and the, the one that makes a point from the values is this would take text, and the other one takes two doubles. And then um, we have um, ST distance, and you can see that ST dis the ST distance I'm using there is not making use of those that uh, greater than dash, um, uh, smaller than, no, smaller than dash, greater than operator. Um, just want to show you that it can work without it, but there is a major significant uh, boost because the other one actually um, it makes use of the, of, the, of, of the index. And then the last one is the ST within, which basically you can use to say, uh, show me all the records that are within a particular um, area. Um, I'm going to skip over this because I touched on it um, earlier. And then the ST intersection would basically draw, I have uh, an example there, but what that would do is that it would draw a solid line around those three. So what I've done is I have run a query that asks to um, show me the three, that, uh, the three uh, provinces that are intersected by a particular road, and I can then draw a solid line around, around them. This becomes cool, for instance, if you do not have a layer for provinces, but you know the municipalities that make up a province. So you can use that to generate the boundary of a province. I don't know if that made any sense. Um, ST Simplify, another, thank you, uh, another very powerful um, um, uh, uh, <laughs> function. <laughs> thank you. What this does is when you're looking at uh, data, um, the vectors can make the data very slow. And what in essence happens behind the scenes if you're working with a web map server is that it actually runs this function. So what you see there is you see two lines on top of each other. At a very high level, if you've ever used Google Maps, if you've ever used Bing, you'll notice that at a very high level, there's a general direction in which a road goes. It has very uh, limited detail. And you notice that as you zoom in, um, and that old image remains, it looks very jagged, it looks very poor, and then when the new image comes in, there's a little bit, no, a, a little bit more detail. It's all about managing the speed at which you want to make the information available because certain detail is not necessary at high levels. So ST Simplify, I've simplified the city of Johannesburg boundary, and you can see, I don't know if I can, uh, okay, but, oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, okay, but if you, if you see that, you can see how much detail has been left out. And um, this makes a big difference when you're querying the data. So as you move into various levels, you just reduce the simplify factor. And um, see, I've even simplified it more, and you can see what it does. OK. Um, I, I touched on this um, earlier, but the, the, I think what I wanted to highlight here is 
This only works if you're using, if one of them um, is, is a constant. So you need to say, if you have one, one known point, so you're walking on the street, you're, you're the constant. So your point is known, then you can use this operator to search through the entire database. Then it will make use of the index. If you compare, if you compare two databases, this is not going to work because you don't have a constant. You're constantly running through records across databases. So this works very best, I mean very well, if you have one constant, which is a known position, and you're trying to find an order of um, data uh, that's in the database. These are other extensions that are available to you. Um, I can make this available at a later stage. If you want to upgrade an existing um, uh, a database, do not jump from one version all the way to another version and skip versions. The best way to do it is to move from one point to another or one version to another. But the best way to do it is to always make sure you keep your database updated to avoid this type of headaches. Um, and then uh, those are just the resources available to you. Um, those two, I didn't want to give too many because that would overwhelm you. But totally, gist.stackexchange.com is excellent resource. So let's just recap. We did a background of the GIS. We did uh, installing postures, and we did postures functions. I couldn't help myself. I had to do this. You know, remember that Steve Jobs thing? One more thing. Um, so someone asked me about this earlier on in the year. This is a 4D um, data CCM JS project. You've seen it uh, available to you on places like Apple, and Google Maps also made, made use of it. But um, this is uh, really just to show you that uh, there is a, um, uh, 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 the, the functionality to make use of data like this. So, so in essence, you have a fourth dimension, which would be a point in space. So you have your lat, you have your long, you have your height above sea level, and you have your point in space. This would then be stored um, again as a data type, and then you would overlay this on the, as you see there, I didn't wait for it to render, but that would be your 2D satellite um, image. For those of you who, for instance, have applications of um, showing what's going on inside an, a, a restaurant, a mall, a, a building, a chemical facility, you want to see how your plant is laid out, um, etc. So that's it. Thank you very much. I don't know if there are any questions. Yes. Can you cluster on with a composite index? Excuse me? Can you create a cluster using a composite index? That's a good question. Can you cluster using a composite index? So if I understand you right, the composite index would be made of what? Two geometry fields. No, a one geometry field and a text field. No. Or possibly even a date field. Uh, no. So it can only create a cluster on a uh, geometry field. Correct. And if that's a composite geometry field? No. Well, uh, index, sorry? Uh, no. So the geometry, the GIST index on the geometry field is really very specific to that data type. Um, so I, I suppose one way of going around that would, maybe, would, would be maybe to try and make use of a materialized view, which is what we have done as far as we are concerned. And uh, so. That would, so, so you can then um, set up a view based on the combination that you want and then serve that to, I mean, for the purposes that I would recommend. And, and that we have tried, it, 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 it works. The only challenge with the materialized view, obviously, is every single time that your data changes, you have to regenerate the view. And if you have like huge data sets, you sometimes have to run your materialized view overnight, uh, like two hours, because you can't do that during production hours. Hi. Um, so we work with telematics data. Yeah. Um, so we get a lot of GPS data coming in from, from vehicles. Um, and often we'll get spikes. So the guys traveling in Joburg, the next thing you'll see there's one coordinate, just one. <laughs> It'll end up in, in Durban. Okay. Um, could you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Um, is there anything that you can possibly think of from 
Boskis that will help identify those. So you have spikes where you have a misread from the G GPS satellites. Yeah. Okay, there is a function in the PostGIS uh, uh, library called uh, make valid. I think it's called make valid. So what that does is that it checks for invalid G GIS data. That is at least as far as that is concerned. But to clean that up, what you can do is, if you know that a, ve a vehicle or a customer is within a specific polygon, Gauteng, you can do select where um, the stuff actually is within the Gauteng polygon and then um, ignore the stuff that falls out. That would clean up your, 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 your um, information. So then you wouldn't have a line that where the guy travels is and then it's to Durban. So you, that point would have been ex ex excluded from the from the select uh, result. Okay, uh, uh, time. But yeah, just just come to me afterwards. Thank you so much for your for your time.